I was an early reader. I read a lot of, uh, of fairy tales. Once, uh, at some point I decided I was more adult than that and I went looking for science fiction. There was a bad novel that others have read too, uh, people my age. Bad novel in the uh, Beverly Hills high, uh, grade school, uh, Hawthorne grade school library. Uh, that could have turned me off, but I discovered Heinlein in time. Uh, Robert Heinlein, Red Planet, Rocket Ship Galileo, uh, a host of juveniles. And then, well, Del, Del Rey and some others also wrote juveniles. They came out as a box set. Um, I was entirely happy with science fiction. It shaped my childhood. Uh, once I, once I knew that these things were written by human beings, why, of course, I wanted to be one of them. I was generally told by my uncles and, uh, and parents and so forth, adults, uh, sure, this is a great hobby, get a job first. And that's the way I thought it was going to be until I realized I was never going to be a great mathematician. And I was getting story ideas. And I did what everybody does, I suppose wrote to the editorial address in the front of the magazine. The big secret. This is your source. Uh, once I sold a story to Worlds of Tomorrow, no, Worlds of If, for 25 bucks, uh, there was no looking back. So I was, uh, I was an established professional in, in my terms by the time I met David Jarrow. And David had come from a weird direction. He had written no books, magazines, short stories, nothing of that. He had written uh, the favorite Star Trek episode, The Trouble with Tribbles. <laughs> and, and he was an instant star. So uh, we got together. I invited him over for uh, dinner one evening. Uh, with me and, and Marilyn, whom I wasn't married to yet. And uh, we got to talking story and emerged with a, with a novella presently. He, he, he probably still writes like a jackrabbit. He certainly did then, um, faster than me by a lot. I think everybody enjoys working with David Gerald. That's what brought in the science fiction writers. He'd met them. They were friends. Uh, the notion was a good one, too. Land of the Lost, the, the notion sounds like a children's thing and was played like a children's thing, but you could run an adult uh, science fiction story from the same premise. It's, it's a basic one. Knock somebody from this world into the next and see how he survives. I don't think I faced any problem writing for children. The problems I had were a quirk in my head that says that a story has obligations. Uh, I had trouble with the way powers over Jer David's head were rewriting my script. I wrote a script I was satisfied with. I waited for responses. Uh, I, I was told they, uh, they had to take out the new antique Win Winchester that identified the, uh, the 49er miner who had been boosted into the land of the lost direct from 1851. Uh, I liked that character, even though I didn't invent him. I, I gave him every bit of detail he had, his dialogue. You know, I was ticked. They replaced him, as David has already told you, I ever, I ever heard that. They replaced him with a uh, Civil War vet and a, and, a, and a cannon, because no kid is going to be able to do anything with a cannon, even if he f finds it. The problem apparently was that a kid might find an, a Winchester in an attic and start playing with it because he'd seen it on TV. The next thing they did to us was they'd run out of money for, for on location, so they were going to lose the river from downstream. Now, this is a, a simple concept when we started it. Uh, the land of the lost is topologically weird, and uh, they've got a river that runs in a circle. Uh, running downstream all the way. There are energy considerations. It's obviously violating important physical laws, and that was our point. You turn that into a road with lights under it, uh, you lose everything. And I said so when David 
said that that was what, what we'd ha we would have to do next. David explained to me that if, if he did it all, uh, he was going to have to be listed as a collaborator according, according to guild rules, get half, half of the money. I said, that's fine. Uh, the next thing I heard was they're keeping the river, they're doing it with blue screen, which, it, which had just been invented. And that's the way that ran. But I did have a, a problem with that. I worked on three episodes, but two of them were collaborations. Uh, downstream was the first one. And for that, I got a full credit. Now, coming out of Downstream, David says to me, I have booked myself for too many scripts. I'm not sure I can produce them all. I could use a collaborator. Would you like to collaborate with me on a couple of scripts? And my first impulse was, no, I don't like the, 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 the unseen higher-ups meddling with my precious prose. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm talking to the story editor. I could write a script and turn it over to the story editor. My story editor can decide what needs, needs changing and take his orders from wherever they come. And then as my collaborator, he can make the changes. I don't have to worry about it. Stop with the first draft and uh, so I said yes. Um, beyond that, again, David told me what he wanted in the way of a story. The storylines were all David's. If I'd gone further with this thing, if it had continued, I suppose I'd have started working with uh, Land of the Lost and, and its weirdness and come to love it. I write for an imaginary Larry Niven, uh, a reader who thinks a lot like I do but needs explaining. Uh, I've always done that. Uh, writing for the actors, heck no, the actors are acting for me. I know that science fiction attracts teenage boys a lot more than it attracts teenage girls. The, the teenage is easy, you're looking to explore, born to explore. Uh, it does seem that boys are different from girls in that respect. Uh, we do more exploring, they do more consolidating. Uh, consolidating doesn't get you into science fiction. Although I have met a great many women who read science fiction and love it, and did as teenagers. Land of the Lost was a good children's show. Land of the Lost as a premise is a good science fiction notion. There's, you couldn't keep it out. There, there's good science fiction in the, in the Land of the Lost episodes. Uh, done a little more expensively, uh, it would have been better shows. Uh, and I flubbed a bit on some of the, on the scripts I looked at yesterday. I could improve them today. Of course, I've had 25 years more experience.